Hello chess friends and welcome to you out of chess channel and welcome back to our common chess games played by computer series. So in this verse we're following some great games that have been played by top engines and today I've decided to show a really beautiful game played by Rebel against the top engine Stockfish in a beautiful Benoni defense. And the cool part about this game is that we'll see again uh, Stockfish playing with the black pieces and especially the Benoni defense I think is really tricky. Uh, I, we didn't see I think so many times now in top grandmaster level that someone pulled off the Benoni defense with the black pieces i find it really, really interesting i used to play the bedoni then stopped to play it because some weaknesses around the score d6 many times when you have this bedoni structure d6 c5 then your opponent is breaking with e4 e5 maybe bishop to f4 maybe f4 knight to f3 so white's aggressive attack i think around the score e5 it's something that bothered me many many times in the Benoni structure so but the fish can always play whatever the fish want to play stockfish is really brilliant in any opening even in the grob opening i think stockfish has some realistic chances to make something out of it so as i said uh here you see now how stockfish handles the Benoni defense really really wild stuff so let's now dive into the game because it was an incredible incredible game that also changed i think a little bit the theory of the Benoni because many times in the Benoni you are attacking the queen side with some poor majority attacks on the queen side but in this game, Stockfish will launch a beautiful kingside attack, which was really, really amazing. Incredible performance here by the fish again, for sure. So d4 was played by the rebel. We have knight to f6 by the fish, c4, e6. After move knight to f3, first the game started as the Blumenfeld counter gambit. Uh, the idea about the Blumenfeld counter gambit is after move d5, then you play in many occasions even this move b5, because if you take, of course, then you lose your centralized, uh, knight, uh, centralized pawn here, and then... Uh, here black should at least equalize the game there are now theoretical ideas what uh black and white should do but in the game uh after move um, d5 here in the continuation we have now the move d6 which becomes now the normal benoni structure knight to c3 e takes d5 c takes d5 and you see now after move g6 we would reach now the normal benoni position so g3 we have now the fianchetto variation of the benoni defense bishop to g2 bishop, uh, bishop to g7 and bishop to g2 kingside castling and also kingside castling here played by uh, by rebel rook to e8 and this is perfectly fine because you are not allowing uh this e4 breakthrough many times as we said we're trying e4 then maybe bishop to f4 and then break and enter here with the move e5 so so far stockfish is not allowing any ideas of e4 and then especially uh, also not allowing the move e5 we have bishop to f4 knight bishop to f5 here also played by stockfish and now knight to h4 attacking the bishop bishop to c8 in the beginning it seemed strange that stockfish played with the same piece twice um, the, basically retreated to the starting square but actually what to do here from white's perspective the knight is still lose a little bit on the board so the knight was not good i think here on h4 so that's why the knight is so far on the edge of the board so in the continuation we have now queen to c1 and that was now rebel's idea to occupy now this diagonal and try to trade off the bishops here on g7 the cool part about also the move rook to e8 is that you're getting out of your square f8 and then if bishop to h6 happened then you can retreat here to h8 your rook is not on f8 where it can be attacked of course by the dark square bishop so we have a6 so this is now the standard benoni attack so we are having this uh, beautiful that long diagonal and we're supporting it now with a beautiful possible flank attack here with the move b5 b4 c4 if possible so we are using now the pawn majority this three versus two situation on the queen side and we're trying to launch now a beautiful attack so that's why a4 so white is trying many times to paralyze this potential attack a4 is the must move in the benoni structure if you're not uh, allow if you allow your opponent maybe you should just play i don't know let's see maybe some ideas bad ideas h3 then b5 is going to happen look at this uh the knight will be kicked away we can just make further progress with the support of the bishop i can guarantee you you lose the game here from white's perspective for sure so that's why a4 at least you are stopping uh black's progress now immediately so queen to c7 bishop to h6 look at this how as we said you not having this uh, uh, rook on f8 now you can retreat with your bishop to h8 without uh, messing up your position so h3 we have knight to d7 knight to f5 really good move here by rebel but actually it's not such a such a huge problem because this is perfectly fine so far 
you cannot take uh, uh, take out the knight of course you get queen to g5 a beautiful checkmate so that's why stockfish left a position like this simply played on this normal idea played on this flank attack on the queen test. so b5 um here stockfish wanted to launch so we have now a5 also a normal idea in the benoni not allowing again um some ideas of b5 if you allow here maybe b5 and maybe you're not reacting with ampassan then again you see black would have these two connected pass uh pawns and they're not pass pawn of course but it would be again really unpleasant to play the game like this from white's perspective so after move a5 stockfish tried here to move b6 we have a takes b6 rook to b6 and okay let's stop and evaluate the position we can say really that this flank attack is now slowed down on the queen side so black still has a decent activity on the queen side but at least white prevented these two pawns uh, to get connected now we have also an isolated pawn on a6 so so far i think also a good defense here by by rebel so we have now knight to e3 and here stockfish continues with the normal moves that are many times present in but only knight to e5 is also a common idea because first of all it prevents this annoying move knight to c4 many times you want to see this move knight to c4 in white's game then it, it's a very very nice because you're checking for the the d6 weakness then e4 e5 as we said makes even more sense with the support of the knight on c4 so so far knight to e5 is preventing this important move of whites you could maybe in the continuation of the game play something like f4 but still i find it very risky to play the game like this then we simply retreat you can play maybe knight to c4 but now we just play rook to b4 and there's not a good way i think anymore to counterplay you have to play weird ideas b3 maybe it's not possible you have to play something like knight to a3 uh this is not good so knight to a5 maybe is an opportunity to um, get your knight into the game so in my opinion this is not working so you are leaving also a little bit here your e4 vulnerable uh, especially because of the beautiful control of blacks of the e4 square so this is simply not working so that's why after move knight to e5 uh, rebel also left the position a little bit like this played now simply rook to a3 so we have here knight from f to d7 uh, we have now b3 uh supporting now uh here the, this uh, weakness because uh, if you leave your pawn on b2 then it's always it's always attacked by the rook and you have to stuck with your queen on on c1 just in order to protect one pawn and that's not how you should use your queen of course in the game uh the queen should be free the queen should be uh, playing in the game so that's why b3 makes sense and uh now rebel is trying of course to include maybe the queen here on f4 maybe reroute it somewhere include some more pieces into the game and then uh creating attack here against black's king so we have now f5 and this is a really brilliant move many times this f5 move would be risky but that would be only possible if the knight would be somewhere on g5 then the e6 would be vulnerable now i'm not seeing good ways how black should reroute the pieces to to the square e6 this is simply just too long path in order to cement your knight on this beautiful e6 square so f5 now really really makes sense here by, by black so bishop to f4 we have rook to b4 you see how stockfish is activating now the pieces in a beautiful way we have knight to a2 rook to b5 staying again again very active with the rook we have now h4 and now bishop to g uh, bishop to g2 we have queen to c2 and now queen to d8 knight to c1 and now knight to f6 and stockfish um look at this what stockfish is doing stockfish is uh removing now the pieces or towards the king side stockfish is trying now to change the direction of the attack because we have to say it basically black pieces are perfectly fine they're in good shape this knight are controlling the center of the board the knight on e5 is perfectly fine the rooks are on good files uh they're attacking semi open files you see both rooks are very very active this bishop is very good on this diagonal it controls also a good um, uh, good squares on the board the the only i think bad piece in the continuation of the game of blacks is this light square bishop because it is uh, paralyzed by its own pawn structure so the a6 is standing in the way uh, you have to also use your bishop just in order to protect one pawn and also this pawn structure this small pawn chain on light squares is bothering not black to get to, with the bishop into the game so so far every other piece i think of blacks is perfectly fine just the bishop on c8 is not uh, working in a good way so here knight to c4 here uh, played by rebel trying to uh continue the pressure around the square uh, e5 and now we have an important move knight to f7 so this move actually knight to c4 helped out now stockfish because stockfish is protecting now the d6 
as we said many times in the Benoni, this is just a huge, huge strategic disadvantage in the game. But now with the move knight to f7, this is a double function move. We are controlling the d6 square, but we are preparing now a beautiful attack with h6 g5. This is now really, really wild what Stockfish will create now. So Stockfish will not attack anymore the queen side. Many times, as we said in the beginning, you are attacking the queen side with the support of the bishop, with your pawn majority, this three versus two um, uh, pawn majority on the queen side but now stockfish just changes the whole game is now attacking the king side and from this point on it becomes now really a beautiful sharp sharp attacking game so we're now in move 27 so as i said stockfish played a couple of positional moves uh, had to reroute the pieces had to also defend the position but now from this point on now the tactical beast comes out so here in the continuation we have rook to e1 now h6 you see preparing g5 we have uh, bishop to d2 getting out of this mess even if you try some ideas of queen to d2 and then we still can play knight to h7 and then we can control further the g5 so basically uh, but white doesn't have any counterplay against this g5 move so okay after move uh, h6 we have here bishop to d2 Reb rebel re realized that the g5 is coming but stockfish played g5 anyway because this is now the way to go so h6 g5 h6 g5 knight to d3 getting the knight into the game but now knight to e4 beautiful move here played by stockfish now you see the knight gets on a beautiful square and there's no way that white is going to give up a powerful bishop uh against the centralized knight although maybe uh this bishop was not the best bishop because it's blocked out also by its own pawn but you don't want to give up your fianchetto bishop because now you can this f takes e4 is going to happen you have to move the knight somewhere and now this bishop finally comes into the game uh the worst piece would actually become now the best piece on the board now look at this the bishop comes on h3 you just maybe somehow include the queen into the game maybe there are even some checkmate threats uh on light squares you don't have anymore the light square bishop so it will be very very risky to play the game like this so after move knight to e4 so rebel di didn't take out this annoying knight on e4 played now b4 and now bishop to d4 this is also a common move in the benoni uh, many times don't forget that about this maneuver of the bishop because now the bishop is targeting the f2 weakness so that's why we have e3 and now after move knight takes d2 the problem is now you cannot take out this one uh you cannot take out this powerful bishop from d4 because we'll simply take out first the rook knight to e1 and then look at this the knight on d3 uh it's not controlling anymore the b4 now we just take out the pawn you have to make a reaction now with knight to c4 this is perfectly fine so we we grabbed at least the pawn so this is not working so after move knight to d2 you have to take out now the knight but now look at this um, c takes b4 knight to b4 and this is really beautiful how stockfish maneuvered now the bishop from g7 uh, in a beautiful tactical way on a best on a, on best diagonal now because now it's much much more important to have this uh, diagonal covered with the dark bishop this bishop was in the beginning very important on this diagonal but notice now there are no uh pieces that the dark square bishop could attack so um basically this bishop on g7 is targeting air it's targeting nothing so now stockfish found really a subtle beautiful way how to reroute the bishop and include it now on this diagonal where it, the uh, where it has many targets the e3 f2 really really great uh positional play here played by the fish really really i really enjoyed this game for sure so in the continuation rook to a4 played by a rebel because also the b4 knight was hanging we have now f4 using immediately this powerful bishop's activity on this long angle we're trying now to um, make a demolition of this pawn structure to basically remove every pawn in front of white's king this is really wild what stockfish is doing we have now rook uh, e takes f4 rook to e1 queen to e1 and now uh, we have g takes f4 and what to do you have to make a reaction if you allow your opponent here f takes g3 then of course f takes g3 is not working because of the powerful bishop's activity so that's why rebel had to take but these are double pawns uh, this is not um, bad what stockfish did here because stockfish has now clear targets the f4 pawn but also now and then afterwards the f2 pawn so we have here now knight to a3 uh, played by 
rebel rook to b8 uh, even if you take here maybe instead of this move knight to a3 let's see what happens if you take out uh here the knight on uh, the pawn on a6 we'll simply take rook to a6 and now the problem becomes uh when the queen takes uh, the pawn on f4 uh then f2 is weak you can maybe deliver one check king to uh, g7 you can even deliver another check but look at this now we can cover our dark horse and uh white has several tactical problems especially f2 also the bank rank is a problem uh, maybe in the near future also the knight can be included into the game so uh, i'm not seeing good ways how uh, white should defend this position so f remove queen to f6 as we said knight to a3 was played so here rebel didn't take out the pawn on a6 so rook to b8 retreating with the rook we have knight to uh, d3 attacking now the bishop and stockfish plays beautiful bishop to a7 staying simply on this diagonal uh, stockfish is saying i will take my pawns on f4 f2 whenever i like so far uh, it's very important to stay with this bishop if you remove it somewhere else of course then it's not so active now uh beautiful beautiful again move by by the pitch so knight to c2 we have a bishop to f5 including now also this bishop into the game this is now an open game and of course this is a perfect game for beautiful bishop pair so knight to b4 we have knight to h6 trying to search for opportunities for the knight here this is now a very important square we have now knight to c6 um, if you play here rook to a6 uh to take out the pawn then you get this one bishop to d4 uh, still the bishop would stay very active and now the knight is included into the game maybe we can then play queen to h6 uh, trying annoying checks here uh, also some ideas of king to f8 rook to e1 are working uh oh, pardon me rook to e8 attacking the queen on e1 so again i think uh, black would be much much better because of the beautiful peace activity the knights are controlling the game defensively very very well but uh, they cannot be included i think in the attack maybe you can tr try again this move knight to a6 but now you get the rook to b7 and again you see we can reroute even the rook here to g7 so many tactical opportunities uh, it's just only i think for for black black is deciding where uh black wants to attack basically here i think white is on the defensive side so even th this is not working so in the continuation as we said knight to c6 was played by by rebel trying this fork against the bishop and the rook stockfish played a rook to b7 and now we have a rook to uh, rook to a3 because if you take now uh, here this one then bishop to d3 and where are you going to go with your knight you have to step back to c6 and now we just play a rook to b1 and you're losing the queen so this is again not working so the knight on um, d3 would be loose so again after move rook to b7 as we said here rebel didn't take out uh, the bishop on a7 played simply rook to a3 we have now bishop to b6 and now a check but it doesn't matter it's only one check no more checks are possible now uh, by by rebels so we have a rook queen to uh, a8 queen to f7 protecting now the rook we have king to f1 if king to f1 makes sense because uh, many times you could be vulnerable with some checks knight to g4 maybe queen to h4 uh, queen to h5 then queen to h2 maybe it was sort of an idea uh to create annoying um i attacking opportunities but um if you play let's see if you play queen to a6 again if you're trying maybe to take out the just one pawn then knight to g4 is going to happen again you step back with king to f1 but now we can even escape king to h6 and we're searching now maybe for this diagonal uh for the queen we can maybe include the bishop into the game we can always take out this key defender of f2 bishop to d3 knight to f2 is working so look at this the f2 becomes now a huge huge tactical problem so um even if um, i don't know even if you take i'm not sure if you sh should just in this types of position lose one pawn just in order uh, uh lose one tempo just in order to grab one pawn uh, as i said although it's probably again an equalish position but i would never really uh, recommend you that, that you lose too many uh, too much time just because one pawn your opponent will probably build meanwhile a beautiful attacking formation so as i said instead of this move queen to a6 here king to f1 was played we have a bishop to a5 this was a brilliant stunning move uh not allowing basically this uh, bishop to be taken if you take now uh, here with the knight knight to a5 then the problem is becoming here uh with rook to b1 you have to now play king 
king to e2 and now with queen to e7 this is game over you have to maybe play something like knight to e5 or maybe if you uh retreat here to f3 then you have this one bishop to uh bishop to e4 you have to step back here knight to f5 look at this uh the pieces are playing a beautiful harmony we just attack uh, this one then we can play here for instance also a beautiful checkmate on on h1 so really really wild stuff uh, this move um, uh, bishop to a5 in the continuation even if you try here a rook to a5 the game is not getting better because now first we take out the knight uh, here on d3 again you have to play something like king to g1 now we'll deliver just one check again one check again this one and it's game over so really really a mortal mortal move this move bishop to a5 this was i think the stunner of the game in the continuation we have now king to e2 uh, getting the king towards the center trying maybe here to even to escape to f3 but now with the knight to uh, knight to g4 uh stockfish is still targeting here the f2 it's not allowing here the king to escape to e3 it's now including also of course the queen into the game now also the rook is trying uh to, to get in the game we are trying bishop to d3 ideas then to play something like rook to b2 basically again the bishop on a5 cannot be taken but okay here uh knight to a5 was played by uh rebel anyway but now comes this idea bishop to d3 taking out the key defender in front of the king which was the beautiful knight now after king to d3 you could also take with the rook rook to d3 but it's not working because of this one a uh, rook to e7 uh, will happen you have to make now a reaction if you play king to f1 then queen to f4 uh, is um, simply leading into disaster here for white there are several problems here on f2 and also on the back rank so it's game over what you could do maybe in this position you could cover yourself with a uh, rook to e3 but it's not getting better knight to e3 f takes e3 then we have even this one queen to f4 uh, with some checkmate threats on e3 you have to play something like queen to a7 if you take of course uh, then we take out also this one then uh, white should be better but that's not the point first actually you should play queen to g4 now when the bishop comes on f3 now we play queen to f3 king to f3 and now it's a little bit different because uh, we have taken at least the bishop we're up the exchange and uh, we have now winning position especially because of the passer on uh, on the a file so as i said even in this position uh, you cannot cover uh, after move bishop to d uh bishop takes d3 here king to d3 so rook to d3 was never an opportunity but now the knight comes into the game we have knight to f2 we have king to e3 we have rook to b2 amazing stuff how stockfish played the game sacrifice the p uh, bishop just to create this a uh, really beautiful tactical motif this mating pattern in front of a white king we have here bishop to f3 but now the queen comes into the game we have here king to d4 and now rook to d2 and very annoying check king to c4 and now uh here the queen comes behind and we're trying to deliver this zigzag uh, checkmate pattern with the queen and the rook so uh even if you play here instead of this move king to c4 even if you play king to c3 it's not getting better because then again you get check uh here with queen to e3 and then again you have to play king to b4 then you get this one you can maybe again play this but now queen to d4 and now with rook to b2 you get this ladder uh checkmate pattern with with the rook and the queen so really wild how stockfish calculated everything in this position uh let's go back so after move rook to d2 as we said king to c4 was played we're getting behind uh, with the queen trying again to deliver annoying checks we have queen to a7 the cool part is you have only one check we're stepping back here to h6 and no checks are possible here um, uh, for white so queen to e3 this makes sense because uh, you're getting the queen into the game but now after move rook to c2 in this position uh the rebel engine resigns so let's see what what you can do you can play of course king to b3 but now with queen to b1 you're getting checkmated and you have to play king to a4 and now with the rook to um well, pardon me with queen to b5 here it's a beautiful checkmate after move uh, rook to c2 you could play maybe here the move rook to c3 you can cover yourself but actually then with queen to uh queen to e3 you cannot take out the queen because of this rook activity you can just maybe grab the rook but then uh, also with this one it's it should be game over so let's go also to this opportunity after move rook to c2 you could maybe go king to e4 king to d4 but now with queen to b4 it's a beautiful checkmate you just cover once and then with rook to c4 again it's a beautiful beautiful checkmate so the knight is covering also this very important square so really really wild stuff really wild tactics what stockfish produced here first 
in the beginning Stockfish had to play this maneuvers to this idea is how to improve the peace activity then when the time came Stockfish strike back with some mortal tactics especially like this uh, beautiful bishop sacrifice to deflect the pieces away from the king's defense and then uh, when the time came Stockfish included three mortal pieces then simply around the king and delivered a beautiful beautiful checkmate pattern so okay I hope that you enjoyed the game really really wild stuff uh, how Stockfish is playing the game if you want to see more brutal attacks like this check out my comments chess games played by computer series with some more stockfish game and some other top engine games and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and what to say chess is the best of course